Hello everyone, this is Will. And this is Alex. And welcome back to another episode. Why? They mostly come out at night. Mostly. Well, 1972 is off to a great start. Wonderful start. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so... But you love kung fu movies, Will. I do love kung fu movies. I do too, they're so good. I don't love these kung fu movies. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, this I really... last one is, uh... It was kind of confusing because it was, kind like, of... really... I mean, it wasn't good at the beginning. It was tolerable. Yeah. Kind of weird fight scenes, but, like... You should mention the title, which makes... Which has no relation to the fucking movie. It's... The title is called Boxers of Loyalty and... Righteousness. Righteousness, yes. Lo- loyalty to who? I don't know. Righteousness in what way? Boxers in what way? Well, yeah, I mean, the title has literally nothing to do mm-hmm. with what actually happens in the movie. Because there's no boxers. The title should be called Spinning Cartwheel of Death. <laughs> that would be a more entertaining title. It'd be very fitting. Yeah, it would be. Especially from the final fight scene, which is yeah. just... There's the, two cartwheels in this movie. The most insane thing I've ever seen. Well, not, it's one cartwheel, but there is another cart that is uh, plays a prominent role in the movie. A strange and awesome turn. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, that was that was some baller shit. That was beautiful. I <clears throat> like I I don't know. Like it, I wanted to like this movie more than I did, but. The middle part is so goddamn boring that I couldn't... Yeah. I almost fell asleep. You could delete the whole middle part and not lose any... You could make this like a 30-minute video where you just show yeah. the, the beginning and the ending. Yeah. And it'd be fine. Yeah. Because nothing in the middle makes any... Has They're, any connection. Not really. It's all just bullshit padded drama. Like, what you should have done is take, like, the first part and then the kind of the important part of the middle section... Yeah. Put that in... Right after the first part. Right after the first part. Then you could do all the other stuff. Yes. And then do the ending. It would make more sense. Because then they could make this movie like the spaghetti western that they they wish they could have made. Oh, yeah. But they didn't. They they steal a lot of samples from, like, classic westerns. Like, music samples. Uh, Or the whole song. I was about to say, it's more than a sample. It's literally the fucking song. But we'll get to that. (laughs) We should talk about the plot. Quote unquote. So, Boxers of Loyalty and Righteousness uh, is a movie. Yes. That has, it has somewhat mo- of a plot. It has moving images. It has actors in it who deliver lines of dialogue. Yeah, it's it's a movie. I mean, they I don't guess. deliver them well. No, neither of them or the fucking people who do the dubbing. No. Nobody. No one delivered them well. No. Um, Very few things are delivered well. No. Except for the end fight scene. Um, <laughs> Alright, so it starts out with a guy. He's on a beach on a horse. Mm-hmm. And he's like remembering how his father got killed by an assassin there. Yes. In the past when he was just a, a little boy. Mm-hmm. And he watches his father and all his all the guards like get taken down this by this one assassin that just pats them gently on the shoulder. Yeah, it's very lethal. Very lethal. I mean, it's supposed to be like the eagle. There's a claw, name, but like the eagle claw. Yeah, and of he like, death. Yeah, he like he. <laughs> I guess he taps him so hard it kills them. He taps him so hard that he like <laughs> penetrates their shoulder with his fingers. What I don't get is there's no vital like there's nothing. I mean, there, I mean it would hurt. There is but, in this like, universe. In this universe, your shoulder contains your uh, heart. So but your bicep has like a major artery, but like no, it's your shoulder. No, doesn't. in this universe, your heart is in your shoulder. So when they squeeze your shoulder, it like <laughs> up, explodes your heart. Kill Bill, Kill Bill style. <laughs> uh, so, so he remembered that. Josh mentioned that during this fight scene, like the guy who's recounting this, it's showing him as a baby, and he's just strapped to his back. And then he, like, quickly runs off and, like, puts the baby behind, like, a rock. And then goes and fights. Goes the... and fights and gets murdered. And then the baby just sits there with a completely blank face watching this. 
Yeah. And somehow he grows up to be a fucking madman. See, so it flashes back and he's explaining how because his dad died and watch his dad die, he's going to go after this master. The this, king. This grandmaster. The, I can't remember. He's uh, a king or something? You Ming. Uh, he's a warlord. So um, he gra- he vows that he's going to avenge his father's death and he learned not just one martial art. All of them. All of the martial arts. All of them. He's... He literally says, I have learned all the martial arts. He's that baller. Yeah. Um, I mean, we see how baller he actually can be. Yes. So then he's he about to like take... a hundred people in the first ten minutes of the movie. <laughs> he's about to take off and he sees this old man... With a coffin on his back. With a coffin saying, they killed my, my, my boy, my boy. And yes, the, but... the guy's like, uh, like, what's going on? And he's like, they killed my grandson. But you don't mention that he says they killed my boy like 50 fucking times. And then says it's his grandson. Yes. Yeah. But you don't mention that it, it takes like two goddamn minutes of him yelling, they killed my boy. And then finally the guy in the horse is like, who did this? Yep. <laughs> it's like, okay, we get it. So then it just, I think it just cuts to him at the warlord's, like, yeah. place. It immediately cuts just, to him at, um... And then he just takes down two of the guards on the wall, and they, they fall down. They fall down And they just, a... like, starts a rampage. Yeah. Like, just goes through this warlord's, just killing everyone. Immediately. He just kills, he just kills like, everyone. Immediately. Just instantly, he's at the, the place where no he needs No setup, to be. nothing. <laughs> just, just goes and just plows through, like... Like, soldier after soldier, just hundreds. Uh, and so he just cut I just them down. Point, I want to point something out. The thumbnail, we watched this on Amazon. The thumbnail, I don't think that's him. Well, that's not him. He I never don't, wore a bandana. I, t- I don't think that's from the actual film. Shocking. <laughs> so that's the second Kung Fu movie in a row that has a thumbnail a that generic, is not from the a movie. A generic Kung Fu thumbnail. Yeah. Because they just found it and were like, hey. Because, first of all, that is way too clear. The copy we watched looked like... <laughs> it looked like, first of all, it was blurry, but it also looked like one of those... You remember sometimes you'd, like, borrow a VHS from somebody, and they fucked up, like, the um, the tape? Yeah, because so they would, like, be like, cut and, like, go to black and white So they'd be, like, those, then... like, ran- random, like, seconds where, like, it would kind of blur out because the tape was fucked up and twisted. Mm-hmm. This movie has that. Or, like, if some heat got to some of the film, it would, like, kind yeah. of warp it a little bit. Yeah. So, like, you'd get, like, parts where it's warped. Mm-hmm. But then this would... thing has every imperfection you would want right on it. And we watched this on, like, Amazon, so you know they just got whatever they could find. This is... Look, there's only, like, five other people who have seen this thing. I'm gonna guess this is the best you can do. To be to be fair, four point nine is a kind of okay rating for this movie, I guess. Yeah. I might give it a little lower, but because of the middle part. I'd probably still give it higher than the last one. Oh yeah. But that was some bullshit. But I mean, we'll, we'll get to our final yeah. thoughts at the end. But uh, so he goes through and just like starts plowing through all these enemies, and then one of the the warlord's henchmen, like son, is it his son? It's his son. Okay. They just never bring. Yeah, it. he's like he's like with the harem, and he's like picking out like girls and like cha- chasing have, them around with like he's blindfolded. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get you. And then he like trips out of a window, and you see the guy fly by with his sword, and lobs his head off. He flies by Superman style, with the sword like pointed down and out, and right when the guy. Pops his head out the window. He's just there, and his head is lobbed right off. Just like 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 a knife through butter. Just... And he immediately has a bag, puts it in the bag, and the next thing you see is um, the warlord is just like sitting somewhere, and a fucking head just flies right at him. And he's like, "What?" And then open it up. Yeah, he's like, "Open up. What is in there?" And then it's I like want. A... Yeah, I wonder what's in there. I don't know. It's a bag, and there's, like, a bunch of blood dripping out of it. Man. What could be it's in there? It's round-shaped. What could be in I there? I don't know. It's his son's head. Yep. And then he's all shocked. And then he looks out the window, and there's, like, a calling card. He was like... Yes. 
It was, uh, what was My it? My name is so-and-so, and... My name is Yip... It was Yip something, I can't remember. I don't know. But uh, it, it, he has his name, and, like, who he is, and, like, what he's doing. He's like, this was for the people, and, This like, was for I'll my be, father or something. I'll be back, or something I'll like that. I'll be back, and then at the end is his signature. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. Leave a calling card. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so he flies off, and then... What happens after that? The movie ends. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hold on. Because we're not to the like the middle middle part, but um... they, oh yeah, they go out and they like chase him. Remember? Oh, that's right. Yeah. They specifically they uh, Tarzan. Remember? Yeah, because he's flying on like vines, and then we get the most incoherent fight scene I've ever seen. Day for night. Day for night, but they toned like the like the the brightness down. Yes, to make it look so like you night. You can't see anything. It's just a bunch of people fl- fl- yes. like flailing around. And the good guy is wearing black. I couldn't tell. All yeah. black. You can't. All it looks like is a bunch of guys in like dark blue being like smacked around by some blob. Mm-hmm. That's what it looks like. After they do like a billion shots of him flying on vines for no reason. I don't know. Because he's, he's, he's Tarzan. And then, like, the, the one of the henchmen of the warlord starts, like, flailing around this rope or whatever. I couldn't see what was on the <sighs> end of it. He, like, throws stuff, and I couldn't see what it was. I think it was daggers, but I have no idea because it doesn't... Whoa. You can't see anything. We find out later what it did. And he, like, he, like, he, like gets him and, like, atta- it attaches on his shoulder. He's yeah. injured. And then he, like, presumably... Like, I guess it explains later he fell off a cliff... But there was nothing, no, okay. there was no cliff. In the movie, it just shows him falling in the grass. But the bad guys are like, I saw him fall off a cliff, he's dead. And even if he isn't, it's poison. So, some bozo finds him. Yep. Takes him to like this hotel, like inn type thing. Uh-huh. It's like a restaurant and like a place to stay. And he's immediately like, master, master, this man is injured. I saw him beating up. With a war lord's men, <laughs> and um, so then they lay him down, and the girl. What she do? What? One of the girls like has to, she has to suck out the poison. Mm-hmm. So you just he doesn't say that, by the way. No, you see it though. You just see her on top of him, like just like like giving his like chest a hickey. Yes, and then she, she's just sucking on his chest, and then she gets up, and then she spits out like this black. Stuff. Yeah. And then yeah. they give him medicine, and then he just lays down for a while. And, and then the movie takes a shit. Oh, then, then the movie we get, we get like forty five minutes takes, of just the movie takes a dump. So this is the first fifteen minutes, and now we get forty five minutes of nothing. Literally nothing. There's some bullshit about how okay the inn is owned by a brother and a sister, and then there's a guy. And his his sister is like a concubine at the warlord's oh, palace. Yeah, he's a he's the warlord. She's the warlord's yes. concubine. And, and she their is... their mother also works at the inn. Okay. So the warlord lets the girl go back to the to brothel. Visit. Doesn't go anywhere because the brother's just mad at her for betraying the family, and the yes. mother wants her to stay because quote unquote. She's she sold her body to to the warlord, and then she's like, "You don't understand," and all this stuff. And like, then she goes back to the warlord because she has to go back before he kills them. Mm-hmm. And then it shows the vengeance guy like waking up, and like he goes over, and they're talking, and like the brother and sister are talking about. How they're going to get revenge against a guy who killed their parents. Iron something? Iron flag? or Iron, iron flag? flag? Iron banner? If that's I, his fucking name? I don't... I can't remember. They just say, it's been five years since Iron Flag killed our mother. Yeah, or and whoever. Then, like, we're like, what the fuck? And then for no reason, it just shows an, old, an older guy walking yeah. through the streets. And he sees the mother. And he sees the mother, and then like throws like a fucking like, throws a dagger at the at the po- at one of the posts. We'll be back tomorrow. And then walks away, and then we get more stupid like a fight in the. Well, then these other idiots from the 
warlord come to the inn, and they see the vengeance guy. Yeah. And they try to um, fight him. And he fights them, and then the f- it just ends. Yeah. They fight him, and then like he's as he's fighting him, them, he like it just like he just goes outside, and it's over. Like yeah. everything's over. He didn't kill anyone. Yeah. And, like the fight is just instantly. No, he over. He even comes in and is like, "Yeah, I'm feeling fine now." And like they're like, oh, "Are you okay? Yeah, I'm feeling fine now." Like, what? you just. <laughs> so they find the dagger on the post, and yeah. then iron banner, iron flag comes back, and then they fight him. Fight him, and they're like. In they, the, uh, in, they're in the the like the the inn. Then they and teleport, then, and then they teleport to like a desert, and then they teleport and then again. They teleport again to like the ocean side. Yes, magic, like a cliff on the ocean. Movie magic. Matter they of just, fact, they just magically transport yeah. to each location. They fight him, and eventually, um, Mister Vengeance shows up, and is like, "I'll take care of this." And he fights him and kills him. The, I will mention the funniest part in that in that scene is the the iron flag tries to like throw a dagger at him and the guy catches it in his, his mouth, mouth and then, and then he, spits it back into yeah, his chest. But he spits it back like a minute later. Yeah. So he holds it in there and then as soon as he has an opportunity, he spits it right at his chest. Mm-hmm. Pretty clever. And we should also mention the main warlord wears tennis shoes. It, it looks like it in one of the scenes. Like, after that, they changed his shoes. Yeah, because they, they noticed. They looked like tennis shoes. Because they noticed. Mm-hmm. But they couldn't reshoot that scene. Apparently not, no. no. Even though it's like a, it's not even an important scene. None he's of just, these. He's just sitting there. None of these scenes are important scenes. No, because it's the entire boring middle section that nothing happens. Yeah. So he wears tennis shoes. Whatever. Oh, there's also a scene where he, like... Um... The... <laughs> It's like the bride or something of his son is crying, and he just sits there behind her and like starts like taunting her because she's crying. Remember? Oh yeah. It's like you're always so tearful, tearful, tear tears, and like... why do you always cry and like all this stuff? <laughs> oh man! And so Stupid. nothing happens, and then they then oh so at. Forgot after he kills Iron Flag, he looks at the two of them, and just says goodbye. I'll be on my way now. Yeah, like that's it. Yeah, he's gonna go back to the Warlord and try and kill kill him. And they're just like okay, and then go back to the end, and there's magically a note there. Yeah, that says like I went like uh huh, you know and again. I'll avenge my father's death or something. And again has his signature on it. Yeah, he just leaves the signature everywhere he goes. And so they're like. Yeah. Like they're like, I hope he's okay. It's like this this dude this random dude that keeps leaving notes everywhere. You saw just, him like two minutes ago. He just killed the guy that killed your parents. They never mention that again. They never even care. They nope. don't even care. They're just like whatever, he just killed he just killed the guy that we were after. Yeah. It's fine. I hope he's okay. You you saw him like two minutes ago. Like two fucking minutes ago. I don't know why they couldn't have just like had him explain while he's on the cliff being like, I'm going to go back and try and destroy the warlord. Well, But no, it's just goodbye. Well, your your question has no answer, I'm sorry. I know it doesn't. I have no comment. This, <laughs> because this whole section is stupid. So then we get the guy going back to the warlord's keep and fighting a bunch of dudes. Again, again. day for night. Day for, clear day for night. Yes. Like you can see blue skies. You know, he gets de- you know how he gets defeated, though? By birds. Yeah. So he's fighting, like, all these guys. He's taking down all of them. He's getting a heads up. And then the henchman comes back with the rope. And they, like, kind of try and get him. And they bombard him. And he seems to be doing okay. Mm-hmm. And then, for no reason, we just hear this. Someone comes out and, like, throws a bird out. And suddenly there's, like, five birds attacking him. But you never actually see them, like on screen it just shows like stock footage of like a bird flying yeah and then him whacking something yeah him like but for no reason also like during this fight scene he takes his shirt off i think it's because he's trying to whack the birds with his shirt shirt. yeah i don't know like that i don't know but like he gets defeated you couldn't really tell he gets taken down they rope him up and then take him to get him tortured yeah they, they roast his nuts yep 
So they lay him down, and, like, it just shows, like, his face and a bunch of their faces, and they're just, like, they're just, like, doing something. They're, like, taking, like, these, like, metal prongs like, or something. Like a hot poker. Yeah, and they're, like, poking him somewhere below the torso. It doesn't show where they're no. poking him. It doesn't show burns. It doesn't show anything. So I'm just gonna say, they're roasting his nuts. Might I as mean, well be. it's a good guess. That's torture. There's also, like, that scene where, um, they're like, they're like, the master said to kill you, but he also said to do it slowly, and then yeah. they start whipping him. And then he grabs the whips. Well, no, it's just, they start whipping him, and it doesn't show the whips, like, connecting with any part of his body, because it shows his whole torso, mm -hmm. and they're presumably whipping him, but it doesn't show any whip, like, it shows whip marks after they're done. You but know it, why? It doesn't show the whips hitting his body. Will, that's movie magic. No, movie magic would be the whips connecting with his no. body. No, if you just show, if if you just have the sound effects, that's all you need, Will. Apparently. You just need sound effects. And they all whip at once, and he grabs every single whip mm -hmm. that's not hitting him. Nope. And then throws them back. Yeah, and then they're like, we're gonna, like, if you do that again, we'll kill you. And it's like, you you told him, like, 30 seconds ago that your, your job is to kill him. Right. Make up your goddamn mind. So then we go back to the concubine, and she's saying that we need to help this guy, Yip, because he can help us. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I have a cousin that runs, like, a like a carriage out in and out of the temple. And did so you like, actually notice, did you actually hear all those details, or are you just making this shit up? No, I just made that shit up, because I, that's what happens, but they don't explain any of that. I was about to say, if, if you actually heard all that, I would be impressed. No, I did not. But okay. I did not hear all that. I'm just... Well, you're assuming. I'm... Well, I mean... He has the very important job of carrying a gigantic pile of hay out of the temple. Yep. To somewhere. We don't know. It doesn't explain where he's going or why yeah. he... What he's transporting we'll or... we'll talk about the uh, magical cousin. Yep. So he, uh... The cousin... They find the cousin and he takes, uh... This quote, all takes like 20 minutes, by the way. Yeah. Quote, unquote, wine... This is the very nutshell version, because if you watch it, it's really boring and slow. Yes. Um, so he finally, the cousin, takes wine down to the soldiers uh -huh. that are torturing Yip. And he's like, the, ma the master said to give you wine because mm -hmm. you guys need a break. You've been working hard down here torturing this guy and po <laughs> poking him in the balls. Um, <laughs> um, so he gives them all wine, and they immediately get, get knocked, knocked out. out. Immediately. And... Uh... You assume that he saves him, but it doesn't show you anything at first. And he's, like, leaving with the carriage. And they're inspecting it. They, they poke. Just, they just start stabbing the hay. Get used to this. They stab the hay. And then you see, like, a shot of him. And it's, like, they don't sh You don't really get it at first, but you then find out that he's under the carriage. He's hanging onto the carriage underneath. Yes. So he leaves. And then another there is checkpoint. another checkpoint. This all takes like 15 minutes, by yes. the way. Each checkpoint takes like an inc incredibly long mm -hmm. time. Because they, they poke again. They yell at the uncle. And then there is a they, they... drunk guy. Yeah. And, it, and I mean drunk. Like the worst drunk actor ever. And he... The, the cousin pulls out a giant, like, fucking thing of wine huge fucking massive. like comically and large he's like, i know your master i know your commander likes wine and the <laughs> drunk commander just hobbles on over and grabs his like, wine Ooh, wine Ooh, damn. i know this man let him go <laughs> let him go he lets him go and then he gets to another checkpoint the final the checkpoint. final checkpoint the last checkpoint yeah of the checkpoints this is all taking about 15 minutes he gets there and they do the same they thing yell at him and poke the hay and then they're off and, then, and they're... then they notice and then the soldiers notice blood yes and then the fucking the fun incredible begins. incredible music kicks in it's like this rock and like almost like thrash metal music yeah like he's like, it's like thrash metal mixed with like 
traditional like Chinese music or something. I know, like taiko drums. And it's stuff. so strange. But, like really like heavy, like yeah, distorted guitar. Because he like starts riding like a madman on like... his carriage, <laughs> and it's just like showing his faces, and it's just like, <laughs> and we're just like, okay, whoa! Suddenly we're like exciting again. Because up the... until this point, we were bored out of our fucking minds. Oh, yeah. Because this is, like, all, like, a good, like, 30-minute section of just, like, nothing mm-hmm. happening. Not even 30 minutes. It's longer than that. It's longer than that. Because the, the last 20 minutes are, like, the exciting part. Yeah. And so, like, it's, like, a good, like, 40 minutes of just... Of nothing. Like, just all this stuff happening that we just explained in, like, 15 minutes. Yeah. It, all that stuff happened in, like, a 45-minute yes. interval. Yes. And so, so he's riding like a madman. He starts riding like a madman. The soldiers start chasing after him. And then the, the, um, one the, of the women. The women come down and she like puts her arms out, like <laughs> and to they stop see, the soldiers. And they like awkwardly surround and her. And they awkwardly like shuffle around her <laughs> into a circle. And she starts fighting all of them. And then the brother tries yeah. to stop the horse, right? And he can't. But the horse like goes out of control. And the uncle, like, slaps the horse away to, like, get the horse to go away. Okay, and then I'll you, let you say ex- that. I'll let you explain this. Number one, I have issues with your description there. You say he slaps the horse away, but I guess? But then, like, he slaps the horse away, and there's, like, a little rock on the path, right? <laughs> <laughs> it goes, keep in mind... Um, Mr. Benjamin's man is under the carriage during this entire madness, okay? So, it goes over a little bump, and the fucking cousin just launches into the air and falls out of the ground. It's like this little tiny rock in the Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Launches him into the fucking air. I know. And all the hay goes everywhere. And he, I'm gonna guess, dies, because all you see is his body. And I'm not joking, they never mention him again. That little rock must have been like a fucking grenade or like a like a landmine because it fucking just... You know what? That bitch dead. <laughs> over that, a tiny little rock. That bitch is dead. And over nothing. But it just they just forget it. They just forget it happened. So the carriage keeps going and there's a cliff. Now we've all seen movies. Where a car goes over a cliff, right? Like that slow mo shot of like a car falling yes. off a cliff. Yes. Like then... where they show like the like right before it goes off, you see like the cliff, and let's say there's someone in the car, and they're trying to get out of the car before it goes over the cliff, and it's really intense. Now, imagine that with a little carriage. A little wooden carriage. And I do mean little. Like a rickshaw. Yes. <laughs> it's like a rickshaw. It's a goddamn rickshaw. <laughs> now. Ask yourself, how the fuck does this thing go fast enough to fly off a cliff? I don't know. And it just hit a rock, so it would just tip over. Really, no, nope. really, that's reality. what I thought. In reality, it would. I thought it was gonna tip over, and like it would flip, and like it would send, you know, Mister Vengeance flying. But right before it goes off the cliff, he like falls off the bottom of the carriage. Yeah, he okay. let he lets go. I don't know why he didn't let go beforehand. Like, in any of this. I don't know. But he lets go, and it flies off the cliff like like you would see in a movie with a car. And it's I'm like, not kidding. It's like slow-mo, too. I'm like not they, kidding. They slow-mo it down and, like, have, like, the echoey yeah. noise of this rickshaw just, like... It sh- flips over and everything. Like a car. <laughs> who does that? You know who? <laughs> These madmen. I will say this. I've never seen that before in my goddamn life. And I don't think I will again. I don't think I'll ever see a slow motion. Like, shot. Like, I've seen movies where, like... a carriage going over a cliff. Yeah. I've seen movies where, like, a carriage goes over a cliff, but there's, like, horses riding it at least. Yeah. At least. Not just a goddamn unmanned carriage. Like, in the logic of this movie, when the horse lets go of it, the carriage just keeps fucking going as fast as possible. <laughs> Like, Apparently the horse was very loosely attached to that. It's incapable of slowing down. It's just not capable. It is an unstoppable, unmovable force. It's like, unless it hits a rock and yeah. then goes off a cliff. Yeah. The only thing that stops it is going off a cliff. 
you can't slow it down. It's it's against the laws of physics. <laughs> I almost wish they would have showed it exploding or something. That would have been the only improvement. <laughs> that would have made so much better. The smart thing to do would have been to have him, like, <clears throat> like, just make it up. Say that he's transporting hay and explosives. <laughs> like, That's what they should have done. Like petrol or something. Yes. Like, just have it go over the cliff and just... Quitting yes. like a fireball. Like, we should make our own shitty kung fu movie and remake this scene with, like, bombs on there for no reason. Because think, why not? I think we need to. Yes. Just as And then sh- when it flies off the cliff, have it explode in midair. Yes. For no reason. Because you already do that in all those other movies. Why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Hell, we've had, like, two movies on this podcast that do this exact thing with cars. Oh, yeah. I can remember Brain of Blood... And two headed transplant. Yeah, I remember Brain of Blood. They changed the color of the car. Yeah, and the same thing. If, if it explodes immediately after it goes off for no reason. Yeah. So why not do it with a carriage? Exactly. Who knows? But here is where it gets fucking. Well, I shouldn't say gets because it already got weird. Yeah. But here is where it gets weirder. <sighs> so the brother and the sister. So you see her at a. Um, holding like a gravestone it's like a wooden gravestone and i was thinking they're mourning the uncle that's what i thought that's what you thought i <laughs> boy was i wrong no one gives a shit about him <laughs> no one gives a shit about the guy that saved him nope then they say it's been two years since he fell off the cliff so they think they so yep. not only do they think he fell off the cliff the bad guys do too he they think he died in a rickshaw now going off a cliff now this may shock you i have problems with this logic number one there's no body okay here's the thing if a rickshaw goes off a cliff and the guy was still attached to the bottom there would be a body it yes. didn't explode there was nothing to like make the body disappear okay. there is one road going off the cliff one road okay now the cousin died earlier on that same fucking road. Let's say, for sake of argument, in the movie, ten seconds later, uh, Mr. Vengeance falls off the bottom of the cart on the same road. Do they not see him falling off the cart? It wasn't even a covered road. Like, because there was no coverage, there was no trees, there was no nothing. Correct me if I'm wrong, but don't they then run up to the cliff and look at the crashed rickshaw? Yeah. Now, are you telling me... That within the ten seconds that this happened, he fell off the cl- he fell off the rickshaw and just bailed. Yeah. Tell me else what happened. He just ran off, even though he was severely injured. Nope. He ran the fuck off, and we we're at first I was confused because they're like it's been two years, and I was like, wait a minute, no. They think he's. I was like, no. I was like, there's no way they think he's dead. The, number one, there's no way they think he's dead. Number two. Who the fuck does a time jump of two years? It was like for this is like a good fifty minutes into the movie. By no the way. reason. This is like fifty minutes yeah. into the movie, like for no reason whatsoever. What's funny is, in the in this time jump, everyone has just gone on their merry way. Yeah, they're everyone just back to normal. But then Mister Vengeance shows up. And he is, all of a sudden, he is like the swag master. He is like the cockiest, like, just, yes. just fucking baller ass. He walks like, in there and immediately, like, like he owns sits the fucking down place. Yeah. and, like, t- tells them all that he's going to, like, you know, that they're nothing. No, they're small fries. Yeah, he does, like, he tells them there's small fries and then does this, like, motion with his hands of him, like, like throwing something them off. like flicking something like, away like if you like had like a piece of lint on your yeah. on your like fingernail and like, just were that's flicking what he does. it off he just he just flicks kicks it their off asses. like it's nothing kicks their asses <laughs> okay <laughs> he's like <laughs> he has so much swag at that point that he has those two years yeah apparently he learned more martial arts apparently he just became even more swag somehow he was just incognito for two years somewhere it, like, so. it reminds me of, like, a bad version of, like, Lord of the Rings where, like, Gandalf the Grey <laughs> becomes Gandalf the White. He's all badass after he becomes Gandalf the White. <laughs> like, but that, the, uh. the, like, Lord of the Rings explains that better, but this one Who just... needs explanations? <laughs> it doesn't even explain where he's been or anything. Like, no. he, he doesn't explain where he went. It doesn't explain why they didn't see him when he... It turns into a spaghetti western. Yeah. I'm not joking. It even starts doing, like, the twangy, like... Yeah. 
like kind of like it turns out to like a goddamn Clint Eastwood spaghetti western with like the cool aloof stranger who comes in and fucks everything up. He starts acting like Clint Eastwood in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Yeah. Like he starts acting all like cool and and like, like quiet and like reserved but yeah. like a total badass. Yeah, like we're just like okay. I don't get it. Fine. Like, it's fucking weird. So eventually um the one of the women or two of the concubines try to escape from the palace. Out of nowhere. It yeah. doesn't explain that they're trying to escape. They just start and running in the woods. They get killed. And he is, like, there. And Swaggy McYip Man comes yeah. over and is like, Yo, like, I will, the, I will avenge your death. And they're like, don't go. It's a trap. He's like, I will avenge your death. And then puts on his sunglasses and, like, you know, strolls into the sunset ready for the final if, battle. I'm just kidding. If that, only. That doesn't happen. But if that, only. <laughs> well, like, heavy metal rock music just plays while he, like, Flicks a like piece of like sunglasses and like starts like <laughs> yeah this totally happens yeah no it, it really doesn't I'm just joking uh, but I mean that's kind of how he acts though he yeah. acts like he's a total just like he's fucking like king of the so world so then um we see that like the main warlord is in like this thing on top of a mountain and there's all these henchmen there and that's when we get to our final confrontation. Yep. Now, Yip yep, McSwagger Pants. Before and we the talk about and this, the sister. before we talk about this, let's discuss how you fix this movie. There's a very easy way to fix this movie. Really? Well, shall I explain? I think I, I think you should because I'm or pretty sure, sure. Do you want to explain? We have. I think you should because I'm pretty sure we have the same idea. Okay. So what you do is you take the first half of the movie. I mean, the first like ten minutes, right? Keep that. And then do the whole part with the rickshaw, like him getting captured. Like, just have him get, have him kind of clumsily get captured. Yeah. And then, like, he d- and don't, you know, don't put in all that stupid thing, shit about, like, how he learned all the martial no, arts No, 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 don't do that. Because that would make it look, that would no. make it, that make no sense. Yeah. So take all that, take all that, I learned all the martial arts stuff out, put in the first ten minutes, and then have him get captured, have uh, the rickshaw whole Rickshaw part yeah. happen about how he dies. Yes, and then have him come back as Yip McSwagger Pants. Yes, and <laughs> continue from there. And then continue from there. That's that's what they should do. And we'll mm-hmm. cut out that entire like fifty minutes. You don't need that. You don't need that. You don't need that forty-five minute nope. interval. You could have done that's it. What you do. You could have done it. What you don't do is put that in the last fucking twenty minutes. Of the goddamn movie. Yeah, you don't you don't have like a protagonist presumably die and then come back as a total badass. Two years later. Fifty minutes into your hour and twenty five minute movie. Two years. You don't do a time. I, I mean, some movies do do time jumps that late in the movie. Two years. But that's because sometimes it makes sense. This one did not make sense. Two years. With no explanation of where he's been. Nope. Or why he didn't say Mother. goddamn word. Motherfucker. Why didn't he use his classic uh, calling card <sighs> bullshit? Like, because... leave, leave a message like, I'm not dead, I just went to train more. Because they forgot. Apparently. They forgot they were doing they that. They forgot to just film a little note like they did the, all the other times? Yes. <laughs> they forgot. Apparently. I don't know. So now we get to the final confrontation. Yes best part of the movie oh yeah this is where it just gets they just they just amp it up to a level that i did not expect and i actually kind of enjoy this, this is where part. you get the money shots just because it's so ridiculous oh it's insanity <laughs> so they start fighting up this like wooden like fortress on like the, a cliff side yeah and they start fighting and like the old guy is just like the warlord is He's just chilling. He's just chilling. He's fine. He's like he's not whatever. worried at all. He's not worried. He's he has total faith in his henchmen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it show and it shows his henchmen like sitting above him, just watching them fight all the other like lower henchmen. Yeah. So they get through most of those, and then the girl jumps onto the platform and tr- starts trying to kill the warlord. Yeah. And the henchman just watches because he knows the warlord can handle mm-hmm. himself, and she's trying to kill him, and then. He jumps down, and, like, he, like, grabs at his belt, 
and like whips his hand across and it, it's, it's a, a fucking sword. It's a fucking sword belt. Yep. They I done, was like, that's kind of badass. They like, done did that. That's actually pretty cool. I, I, I have to admit that that was that was actually really cool. Like, they, I actually uh, kind of liked that. They did that. They did it. They did. They did a uh, mm-hmm. a sword that's also a belt. Yeah. And eventually, the um, the woman's brother, right? Yeah, comes in and starts. They start fighting, and him. he gets like, he gets killed. Yeah, so he they uh, the henchman start like staggers them down the uh-huh. stairs again, and he slashes the brother across the chest. Yeah, and the brother's like, "Avenge me! I'm dying! Avenge, Avenge me. me!" And then like just leans over a post and dies. And dies. And so the 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 girl is pissed. Yeah, and they keep fighting. Lots of lots of fighting. Yip's fighting another like. Um, Yip McSwagger Pants is yeah. fighting another like henchman, yeah. like on a cliffside, and like gets a hold of him, and then sees the girl like being staggered back by the yeah. the bat the bad guy with the the belt sword, yeah. And um, he's he like, helps her. Yep, he helps her, and he kicks him the fuck off. We for- oh we forgot to mention the best part about the scene before this though, where the brother flies up the cliff. No, it's not the brother. It's um. Swaggy. Oh yeah, Yip McSwagger yeah. pants fly. Okay, so when, they, when they're infant, <laughs> infiltrating, the, he flies like the Superman. Fortress, he like he like jumps, but he like flies like Superman up a massive mountain. Keyword: massive. It's huge, and he just flies right up it like he's just fucking Superman. Yeah. Because apparently he was learning to fly those two years. Yeah. He was presumably dead. Also, there's a lot of jumping in this action scene. Oh yeah, a lot of jumping. a lot of like monkey jumping. Yes, it's like weird, like and, like they're like high knee jumping. Yeah, and eventually he like gets the uh, belt guy, and like he like flies his sword into the into his, uh, yeah. his stomach. So he impales him. The other guy, he kicked him off the cliff, and um, he magically turns into a dummy when he flies off the cliff. Uh-huh. Which I have. Zero complaints about. I love the ragdoll effect thing. Like it, no, it, I love that shit. It looks so ridiculous, but it's. it's I great. love it. I love bad dummy shots. I love them. And he does that, and it's just. So now it's just the warlord. It's just him and the warlord. Yip McSwagger pants and the girl. Yeah. But so, she doesn't really help that much. In no, because he tells her stay back. Yeah. And then he starts fighting the warlord, and then he tells him who he is. He's like, "You killed my father." And he's like, you're so-and-so, I'll kill you. And then there's like this scene where they just yell at each other for like 10 seconds straight. And then it's like, okay. Then they start like hand, like, you know. Doing then like... the, the crazy shit starts. Yeah, so they get onto this, like there's a rick- another rickshaw. So they're, they're on a cliffside. They're on a cliffside and there's like a, a wooden thing yeah. with like posts sticking out of it. Yeah. And so they start fighting around it, like, and... Uh, like the the guy they like kind of get each other back and like they keep hitting each other and like keep staggering each other and eventually Yip McSwagger pants grabs the the stick and like starts trying to wail on you this forget guy forget what happened before did i yes oh shit remember he went under it oh yeah that's right and oh yeah i know so he did something the, the old guy tries to run him over with the rickshaw but the guy rolls under the yeah the rickshaw and like grabs onto the bottom of it again and i'm like are they doing this again yeah and then the old guy i don't starts... know starts spinning the rickshaw like just furiously now i ask you will why i don't know to disorient the guy i have no idea but why but yet mcsquire pants is used to this you can't disorient him He's too fucking swag. He has too you cannot swag. disorient him. He has too much flair. So then he gets point. up and grabs the pole. Yeah, he gets up and he grabs the pole, and like the old man like kicks him back onto yeah. the rickshaw and like tries to like, kick. Well, him. No, if he, he grabs the the girl as a hostage. Oh, that's right. And he like he knocks the guy back onto the rickshaw and like pushes it towards so, the cliffside. Swaggy pants is on the rickshaw. This is the, the now. Tits. It's about to fly off the cliff, and he's just on it. He's not jumping off. No, he's just, he's just watching it, like, go off this cliff. Then, right before it goes off, mm. he takes his leg out, and he, like... Stops the he carriage. stops the carriage. He puts it on the wheel. And then he becomes the... Oh, man. You know what he becomes? He becomes Rickshaw Man. 
The fucking <laughs> badass of the West. He becomes Rickshaw Man because he then pushes it forward with his foot. He starts kicking it forward. He starts to <clears throat> control the Rickshaw by, like, furiously kicking it. And then he, like... It, the most hilarious part is he fights with the rickshaw. Yes. He, like, starts swinging the, like... He starts swinging it around and, like, hitting the... The, the old guy with, with it. <laughs> yeah. With, and just, like, starts swinging it around and, like, you know, like, slamming it down on this yeah. guy. And then he finally... And running him over. He ran him over and, it like, like blood just, like, sprays out yeah. of the warlord. so he runs him over and it's, like, on him. And then he gets the fucking, like, pole and starts bashing his face in... And I swear to God, you can see, like, brain matter next to him, but he's still alive. And the old guy gets up. And, and then, they fight some more. And then, you know, rickshaw man kicks him onto the rickshaw. And then he jumps into the fucking air. And, cr- like, crushes his chest. He kicks his chest, and the old man just, like, sprays blood. Yeah, like, out of his mouth in slow motion, just an insane amount of blood sprays out. And then he kicks the rickshaw with him on it, and then it goes off the cliff. Yep. And then... And then we get a scene... Of her, she's buried her brother, while it plays uh, music that they, um... <laughs> sounds, sounds eerily familiar. Yeah. It sounds like Finale by Ennio Morricone from Once Upon a Time in the West. What? That's because it is! Yeah! It's the same song! They went there. Great. They went there. If you're going to steal, steal from the best, I guess. But why? I why don't add know. a spaghetti western soundtrack to a martial arts movie? Because they thought that we gave a shit. Rickshaw Man, though. Because they thought that with her burying her br- brother and Rickshaw Man supposedly leaving to do whatever the fuck, they thought that like that piece of music would really like make us feel things. The problem is... I don't give a fuck. I don't care about any of these guys. I just want to see him run over motherfuckers with a rickshaw. I just want to see him, like, more martial arts scenes of him kicking yeah. a rickshaw around and, but like, no. fighting with but it. But it doesn't matter because that end scene lasts, like, I'm not joking, like, ten seconds. Because and then end. She, she's, like, at his grave, and then he gets on the horse, and she's like, wait. And then he takes her on the horse, and then it just says the end. That's it. That's it. it no credits. No nothing. nothing. There's no resolution. Nothing. It just ends. He he murders this old man, kicks him off a cliff, and then ten seconds of like quote unquote resolution, and that's it. Yeah. So that's uh, boxes of loyalty and righteousness. Um, wow. I have. A, I actually have a like. I mean, we said a, most of it, but like. <laughs> That Do you have more to add? I just, I just want to um, establish the gravity of how inter- fucking entertaining yeah. the rickshaw fight was. Because they went there. I have never seen a movie where a guy fights by kicking a rickshaw around. I haven't either. But I'm glad I have now. We have now. Because that fight scene was so worth it. That was ridiculous. That was worth the hour and like ten minutes we watched of the film. I'll say that... The last fight scene is genuinely good. Like, it's pretty well choreographed. The two, um, the old man and Mr. Swaggy Pants, like, beat the ever-loving fuck out of each other. Yeah, it lasts and a while. I'm not joking. By the end of it, they are both, like, drenched in blood. Yeah. And it's, like, pretty well chore- choreographed. So, I'll admit, like, it's kind of a weird thing for me, but I liked about 30 minutes of this movie. I liked the beginning and the ending. That's that's about thirty minutes. Like, but and yeah, like the rick so the, the first rickshaw scene on. So like the first, I would say like the first ten minutes. So may okay. So I'll give it a break. Maybe it's like forty minutes. Mm-hmm. So the first ten minutes are just pure, just insanity, and I, just nonsense. I just, I mean, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. Yeah, I didn't hate it. And then you get 50 minutes of nothing. Yeah. And then you get back to the kind of good stuff. And then, and then the rickshaw, like the rickshaw fight just it takes the cake the, for me. Yeah, you get to the ending. Like, which... if you're a martial arts fan and you like ridiculous fight scenes, yeah. you need you need to watch this movie. Yeah, no, the I, last... I would recommend the last, like, the last, like, 20 minutes of this film. The last fight scene is genuinely entertaining. Yeah. 
because it's ridiculous, and I've never seen that before. It's just you have to wait through a, a lot, lot of shit of bullshit. Yeah, I can see a lot of people turning this off. I I almost wanted to. We were I I kept checking the time, and then it yeah, finally, you checked the time a couple times. Then it finally got back into it, and I was like, okay, never mind. Yeah, it delivered. That rickshaw, I just I love it. Like I just wanted to know what he was doing with it. Rickshaw man. When he was under the rickshaw, and he was spinning it around. 360 like a fucking madman. I don't know. Disor- I, 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 I'm guessing he was trying to disorient the guy. I, I don't know. I don't know. But Will, question. Why didn't he just th- flick the rickshaw off the cliff? I don't know. Exactly. Or why did why did rickshaw man not fly off the rickshaw when it was hurtling towards the cliff? Because then you would not have had the greatest My favorite scene, yeah. action scene of all time that's a little bit of a stretch but okay no it's not a stretch it's oh it's so entertaining though like seeing a guy fight with just his foot on a wheel in a rickshaw is <laughs> running over a poor old man like i want to shake the hands of the man that that made that <laughs> came up with that idea because that is just bonkers who thinks of that drugs who thinks of a guy he's like okay we're gonna have a fight scene and the guy's gonna the guy's gonna stop the rickshaw with his foot, and then he's gonna wheel it towards the the bad guy, and then start swinging the legs. Do you like the fact that there's just randomly a rickshaw on the side of the cliff? Yeah, yeah. Well, there had to be. Yeah. Like like you said, if that would if that wouldn't have been there, we wouldn't have gotten that fight scene. Mm-hmm. And it's great. Mm-hmm. So that's my final thoughts of the film. That yeah. rickshaw scene just made it totally worth it. To oh me. yeah. Um, what are your final thoughts on the film? Pretty much the same. Um, you sit, you have to sit through a lot of bullshit, a lot of just nauseating boredom and absolute nothing plot wise, nothing. But once you get to those last 20 minutes, you see some absolute insanity. It's worth it. Yeah. I would say it's worth it. I would argue yeah. that. Um, cause I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I am, I encourage Kung Fu fans to watch this movie and maybe skip like the middle section. Mm-hmm. Just go to the part where the um, rickshaw guy is leaving the, the yeah. palace. Just go to that. Just go to that, and then you'll be fine. Just watch yeah. it from there because it gets ridiculous. It gets insane. Um, so, so this has been uh, the boxes of loyalty and righteousness. Boxes. Uh, you can you can find it on Amazon if you have a Prime membership. I, I think they. I think there's also a copy on YouTube. There, there probably is. A lot of these, like, are on YouTube, and the better version is on yeah. Prime. You can be, like, one of the only ten people who've seen this fucking thing. The rickshaw scene. Go watch it, please. Yeah. Just look it up on YouTube. If you don't want to watch the whole movie, just look up, like, the rickshaw fight scene. It's worth it. <laughs> I promise you. Um, so, yeah. That was our second Kung Fu movie of 1972. As always, this has been Will. And this has been Alex. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh. <laughs>